We're now going to take a look at some of the tools that the various browsers offer us as web designers and web developers. Each browser has some built-in tools, and I'm going to take a look at Internet Explorer, Google Chrome, Safari, and Firefox, and show you how you can access these tools should you need them. When you first start out on the web and are working in HTML, they're not that important. But once you get to the point where you're working in more CSS and possibly JavaScript, they become crucial tools to assist you. So let's take a look at these. I'm going to start in Internet Explorer. And right now I have Internet Explorer set to be in IE8, a very old version. That's because I have a project for a national company that I'm working on and they're using IE8. So once that's complete, I will move it up to IE9. But let me show you IE8. And if I'm in this browser and I hit F12, you can see I get this little piece here. And what this is, is the little tools piece built into Internet Explorer. Now IE7, you had to do it as a separate download. IE8 and beyond, it all is built into the browser. So it's not a separate download. So let me show you what it provides. Now what I'm going to do is pin this. This little icon in the upper right is called the pin. And what that does is attach it to the browser. Right now it's this free floating window that gets a little bit difficult to work with. So I'm going to click that icon and you can see now it's pinned at the bottom of my screen. And let me open up Internet Explorer so it's a little bit bigger and we can take a look at what this provides. Now I'm on the educator.com website and so the code down here, what we're looking at is actually based on the window that's open presently. So down in here, you can see there's an HTML tab. There's a tab for CSS that describes the various CSS pieces. And the script deals with JavaScript pieces. There's also something called a profiler, but I'm only going to work in these first two, the HTML and the CSS. Now within the HTML area, you can see there's a little arrow. And within CSS, there's an arrow. And you'll find this arrow is pretty consistent across the browsers. What that does is allow you to click on the arrow and select something up in the upper area in your browser. And you can see it populates both panels with information about what you specifically selected. So the HTML is on the left here. And notice my style is on the right. And some of these styles that are crossed out what it means is some of the styles have been overridden by other styles. And I don't want to get too much into that. But if I click on the layout piece, you can see there's margin, border, and padding being shown. There's the inner content area. And this changes depending upon what I select. So if I click the arrow again and select something different, you'll see it changes based on what I've chosen. So you can get both the HTML information for that particular object you've selected. You can also get the CSS information right within the browser. These are really nice tools, and it even goes as far back as Internet Explorer being built in. So I'll close that one up. Let's take a look at Google Chrome and how that one works. So I'll expand that one. And within Google Chrome, let's try the same thing. I'll hit F12, and notice it pops up for me. So you'll see across browsers, F12 is pretty consistent. Now, here is my Elements tab, and as you can see, this operates very similar. What I highlight is going to end up being covered down in this area. Now, within Google Chrome, this piece is just a little bit different, so I can undock here if you just cover hover over these, you'll be able to see. Now this one shows this little magnifying glass to inspect instead of an arrow like some of the other browsers. But I'll click on that 
and I'll go up here to this follow us once again. Now notice this one gives me a little bit more information. As I hover over, you can see there's widths and heights, there's some tags being highlighted, there's a few different pieces changing. And when I go to click on it, I'll go up here to the header and select it. You can see my styles are on the right, my HTML is on the left. So that's Google Chrome. Let's take a look at Safari. And I'll move over here, open this one up, and let's check out F12 again. Now I clicked on F12. It didn't seem to do anything. And since Safari is based on the Mac side, some of the shortcuts are a little bit different on Windows per se. But within this area, let's see, Safari extensions. I'm not seeing much about some specific tools within this area. So let me go out to the extensions area. And what this allows you to do is download some extra pieces for the Safari browser. And some of these extensions you have to download and install into the browser itself. But there are a lot of different extensions available. So within these tools, you can see there isn't quite the same features as in Chrome and Internet Explorer. Let me switch over to, I'll close that one up, and let's go out to Firefox. Now Firefox has some real good tools as well. I hit F12 and nothing much is happening. So let's take a look actually over in the Firefox menu. And I have some add-ons here that are available, but notice there's one called Web Developer. And if I click on this, that's what opens up the lower area. So you can see there's a few different pieces in here, and most of the time you're going to end up getting some information in there. But I'll click on CSS. There's errors and warnings. So this is the built-in piece. You can see I've even got 3D views. I've got quite a few different things. Now, that's what's built into Firefox. There's also, similar to Safari, some really good extensions that I prefer over this built-in piece. Now, here is an inspector. Let me show you this one. And I'll go up, and as I hover, you can see I'm getting information once again. So this is more similar to the Internet Explorer and Chrome piece using what's known as the inspector within the browser. So there are a lot of options built into the various browsers, and depending upon what you like or what you are interested in correcting in the page, that is the focus you want, and you can see most of them tend to put HTML on the left, CSS on the right, and if you don't like the tools that are built into the browser per se, you can always go out and get extensions, which are add-on products, to extend what the browser is able to do. Now let me show you one last thing here. Here is the box model piece, similar to that visual layout. So if I come up here and let's say I click on this box, you can see it's going to show me that information. So browsers come equipped with tools to assist you when you're working on the web. So don't be afraid to browse and explore some of the tools built into the browser. If you don't like or if those tools aren't enough for you, make sure you go out and check out the various extensions that are also available. And those extensions are on a per browser basis. But those are some of the various tools to assist us built into the browser. We took a look at Internet Explorer, Chrome, Safari, and Firefox. And you can see similarities across some of the tools. And if those aren't enough for you, make sure you check out the extensions for the various browsers as well.